We live in a time where we are flooded with all these AAA games to choose from, and it makes those smaller, lower budget gems so much more difficult to find. It's easy to just play the next big hit because that's what everybody else is doing, but sometimes a game like this comes along and makes me happy that I decided to try something a little bit different. And that something different is Abiotic Factor. You sure picked a day. Things a bit hectic downstairs this morning. Containment breach. So starting off, this is a survival game. That means you have all the typical survival game mechanics you would expect, like resource gathering, crafting, managing your hunger and thirst, resting when you get fatigued, and the most important, pooping. What sets this game apart from other... <laughs> What sets this game apart from others is its setting. The vast majority of the game takes place in this massive underground research facility. So instead of some big outside open world, you get to explore the depths of crazy research labs and portals to small sections of other worlds riddled with all kinds of strange enemies. At the time of making this video, there are about 16 different areas to explore with a bunch more coming very soon according to their roadmap. With that being said, I still managed to get about 50 hours out of this game and I tend to blow through games a little bit faster than the average person. Even though it's all one big facility, each area still manages to be unique from the way it's laid out to the aesthetic and it makes you really want to explore more in a way I found more interesting than other survival games. If you've ever wondered what a 90s sci-fi underground research facility looks like, well, look no further because they kind of nailed it. And if you're into that type of thing, this will most likely scratch that itch. The game will start you off with a little tutorial that I thought was fairly decent. You start in the outside world and slowly move your way underground like a new employee being shown around. They teach you the basics and give you some sneak peeks at some crazy things to come and it really sets the stage for what you can expect later on. Shortly after that, shit goes south really fast. Now you're in this huge place surrounded by weird alien monsters with not much to defend yourself with. It's like an episode of Naked and Afraid, but hey, at least you've got this office chair to scoot around in. Also, playing with friends is highly recommended. You can go through the game solo, but it's so much more fun to go through the chaos with some buddies. As you run around and open new areas, you will come across a host of NPCs who will give you story bits and guide you in the right direction. They are fully voiced, so you won't be stuck reading a bunch of text while exploring. Being someone who doesn't want to sit there and read everything, I very much appreciated this. Sure, some of the voice acting is kind of meh, but I'll take even bad voice acting over a wall of text to read. A lot of cool lore bits are also explained in a similar way. Spread out all over are these little hologram things you can interact with. With, and one of the doctors will explain whatever is in that area to you. Again, fully voiced and well done. The combination of those and the environmental storytelling makes figuring out what's going on actually a lot of fun. I've got the ADD fish brain, so if these manage to keep my attention, then bravo, that's no small feat. The way you progress through the world also makes sense and I found it very satisfying. So pretty early on you get this keypad hacking tool and that will be your main way of opening doors to new sections. As you progress through the game you will upgrade this in order to access higher level doors. Sometimes you will instead need to use a specific item like a key or something else to power the door to unlock new sections and I really appreciated that variety. The map is a decent size as well so to help with that you get access to a tram system. As you get farther into the game you will unlock more trams to help you go back and forth with ease but I did find with how the world is designed I didn't really need the tram all that much. Everything is connected in a very Dark Souls way with tons of shortcuts. It seems very well thought out and I never really felt like I had to run huge distances to get to where I wanted to be. You can be just about anywhere you want within a few minutes by either running or taking the tram. There's a lot of depth to the world as well with tons of elevators and multi-story areas so don't expect to be running through a bunch of boring linear spaces the whole time. The portals I mentioned earlier are pretty cool as well. Each one is completely different in its layout and environment adding some extra flavor. The main purpose of these is for progression. There's always something you need inside of the those little slices of hell in order to progress to the next zone and I thought it was a really cool and fun way to spice things up a bit. All but one of these was pretty small but even still I really enjoyed most of them. The game also has an experience tree. As you use something, you get XP for it. And as you level it, you not only get a little bit better at it, but you also unlock perks. Certain things will be locked out until you level up that skill as well, like heavy weapons or certain guns. As someone who needs a goal, I found the system mostly fine to deal with. It did feel pretty good when I unlocked the ability to use heavy weapons and to finally use the SMG. For others, it might feel a little bit tedious trying to level up each skill because the XP grind is a little bit on the slow side. The resource gathering is maybe slightly different than what you might be used to. You're not gonna be running around chopping trees 
down and smacking rocks. Instead, you're mostly just smashing things like boxes and computers to get the stuff you need. Enemies will also drop unique things specific to them, and each area has its own set of resources, so it's nothing really new. Crafting is pretty much the same story. There's armor and weapons to make, along with all the little components you need for other things. So again, nothing new. You have one workbench that you upgrade and one repair bench. Not needing 20 different benches to get stuff done is very much appreciated, especially after playing a game like Nightingale. They did add something that I wish was in every survival game, and that's this triangle pad you stand on that automatically sends the loot from your inventory into the appropriate nearby chest. Being able to come back to base, stand on the pad for a few seconds, and then head right back out is very nice. Something I thought was a little strange was the lack of base building. So considering the game takes place inside, it does make sense that you wouldn't need to build walls or a roof. Instead, you find a nice space and build the fences. What we ended up doing was finding a couple of rooms across the little bridge and just setting up shop there. Only one way in, so setting up traps and barriers was easy peasy. Quick tip for anyone who might be playing this, you can easily farm the robots that come alive at night just by setting up a couple of jump pads and a choppernator right in front of the spawn point. It'll get stuck bouncing up and down while the Beyblade of Death does its thing. Just make sure it's hooked up to a battery since you lose power at night. Speaking of night, the game does have a 24 hour cycle. At night, the power will go out. So that means no lights or access to anything that isn't hooked up to batteries. Little events will also happen. So be prepared to defend your base. It can get a little bit spicy if you aren't ready for it. These events also seem to get more difficult the farther along in the story you are. And there's a special enemy that likes to stalk you later in the game, but I'm not gonna spoil that one. So good luck. Overall, I didn't really have any complaints about the game. There were a few strange choices like being able to loot an SMG very very early, but not being able to use it until we got to the end of the available content. The weapon durability being way too low and XP gains also feeling pretty low. Fortunately, you can just adjust for this in the server settings and we did end up making a few small adjustments, but mostly everything was solid. This isn't the most graphically intense or beautiful game either, but the graphics here kind of add to the charm and the gameplay experience is what matters. This game is also only 25 bucks and I would say it's 100% worth it even in its current state. So really awesome game, totally worth picking up if you're going to play it with friends. But that's all I got for you. I hope you enjoyed the video and got something out of it. And as always, the Goo Crew thanks you for watching.